Welcome back to another lesson of Math Explained. Today we are going to be looking at trigonometry and how to solve for either a side or an angle using the sine, cosine, and tangent ratios. When we're looking at the sine ratio, our sine ratio is equal to our opposite side over our hypotenuse. And we'll talk about what each, how to label these sides in just a moment. Our cosine is equal to our adjacent side over our hypotenuse. That's a long word to write. And then we have our tangent ratio, and that is going to be our opposite side over our adjacent side. So I like to remember this as sa ka Toa. So that if you can remember that each of these first letters stands for your trig ratio, sine, cosine, and tangent, it will help you identify which sides we're actually looking at. So sa is opposite and hypotenuse, ka adjacent and hypotenuse, and toa opposite over adjacent. Now how to label these sides depends on where are we starting. If I am starting from an angle in this corner, then to label my sides, the opposite is always going to be across from that angle that you're looking at. This side will not touch or form the angle in any way. Notice the other two sides come together to form the angle. So the opposite side never ever reaches it or touches it. Our hypotenuse side will also never change no matter which corner you start from because the hypotenuse side is always going to be opposite wherever this 90 degree angle is formed. So this will always be our hypotenuse, which is going to be the longest side on any triangle. So look for that 90 degree symbol. That is where the sides come together and form that L. Now the other side is going to be our adjacent side. Adjacent means beside, so it's right beside the angle that we're looking at. So if you were going to, say, try to figure out what this angle is, we would need to know some numbers. So let's put some numbers in. Let's say that this opposite side is 12 and the hypotenuse side is 20. And um, we don't even know the adjacent side. Then the only way to calculate this angle is using the opposite and the hypotenuse. So that tells me that I need to be using the sine. In order to turn this into a degree, I need to use the second function on my calculator to give me this little negative one symbol that is going to turn this fraction, this division, which would normally give me a decimal, it's gonna turn it into a degree. So take a moment, pull out your calculators and see if you can calculate that. All right, did you get an answer? I did. I got 36 point, if I round to one decimal place, 8.69 is gonna turn into 36.9 degrees. Notice the symbol for degrees is this little circle. Great. Now, could we find the adjacent side? I absolutely could if I use Pythagoras. But the other way we can do is let's use trigonometry. Now that we know that this angle inside here is 36.9, let's solve for the side. We'll label it x. If I am trying to find x, I have two options here. I can either use the opposite side or the hypotenuse because we know both of those. I'm going to use the opposite side. So if I'm going to use the adjacent and the opposite side, we're using tangent. So now I'm not going to use the second function like we did because we already know the degree. So it's the tangent of 36.9 is equal to our opposite side, which is 12, over the adjacent side, which is x. Notice our x is in the denominator. I need to make, get it up into the numerator. 
So basically, these two are going to trade places. And it's going to become x is equal to 12 divided by the tangent of 36.9. Now, the long explanation of how they just traded places would have been to multiply both sides by x so that the x is now canceled on this side and then dividing by the tangent of 36.9 on both sides, moving it into the denominator and canceling on the left. So there is now our x equals 12 divided by the tangent of 36.9. Let's go ahead and put that in on our calculator and see what we get. I got, if I'm going to round to the nearest whole number, 16. Now, I could have also found the side by using not the opposite, but the hypotenuse. If I chose to use the adjacent and the hypotenuse, I would be using cosine. So now I would have the cosine of 36.9 equals the adjacent, which is x, and our hypotenuse, which is 20. Now we notice the x is in the numerator. So to solve for x, I need to do the inverse of dividing by 20, and that is to multiply both sides by 20 so that it will cancel and get x by itself. So now x equals 20 times the cosine of 36.9, and we should, if we put it in on our calculator, we will notice we also get an answer of 16. So it did not matter if I used tangent and played with the opposite and adjacent or cosine and used the adjacent and hypotenuse as long as I have one variable, which is what I'm solving for, and I use one of the sides. Make sure you're paying attention to which trigonom trigonometric function you should be using. A third way we could have solved this was Pythagoras. Do you remember Pythagoras? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. When you know two sides of a triangle, you can find a third side. I know A or B, it doesn't matter which one is this. So we have 12 squared plus B squared equals C squared, which is always your hypotenuse. So I would have to subtract 12 from both sides, turning this into 20 squared minus 12 squared. So that B squared now equals, well, 20 squared minus 12 squared is 256. And so b, don't forget we now need to square root, is 16. So those are three ways that we could have solved and got that missing side, Pythagoras, trigonometry using the cosine ratio, or trigonometry using the tangent ratio. And that's it. There was one side left to solve, or one angle left to solve this triangle. Once you know two angles, the third one's the easiest, because a triangle always adds to 180 degrees. This 90 degrees is always going to be in this corner opposite that hypotenuse. That's what a right angle is, 90 degrees. If you take 180 and subtract 90, and subtract 36.9, we have 53.1. So that would be the third angle that is missing in here. And now we have completely solved this triangle for all sides and all angles.